Even you get bored when you're playing chords. How do you think the audience feels? Let's look at some three note jazz chords that are gonna change things up a little bit so you're not playing the same tired harmony all the time. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. I just wanna start this video with a warning because some of these voicings are completely rootless and also not so completely complete. So some of them are actually almost only extensions and alterations. This example has a few sort of advanced sounds, but it also has a really sort of natural flow to it. And I think you can easily hear what's going on and that the chords connect. But the way that I'm making this is really just by taking some fairly basic voicings and then starting to change notes here and there. And that's really how you want to create new material for your comping and new voicings, because then you're starting with what you're already playing, what you already know, and then you're just making variations on it so that it sort of naturally will fit with what you're already working with. So just to show you what I'm working with here, the first voicing is coming out of this C major triad, and that's really just an A minor chord without the root. And then I'm exchanging the, the fifth with uh, the eleventh, and then you get this voicing. For the D7, then I'm starting with this, which is just a diminished triad. Here, instead of playing the flat nine, I'm starting with the sharp nine, so I get that minor second interval. The first part of the G major 7 might seem really complicated because we have the whole moving part here. But really this is coming out of this really basic G major 7. And then what I'm doing is I'm playing it as a rootless chord. And then I'm exchanging the fifth for the sharp 11 and moving that up to the sharp 5 and half steps. And for the final G major voicing, then I'm starting with what is really just the top part of this G at 9. So this rootless version of that, and then instead of playing the fifth, I'm playing the sharp 11 like this. If you want to play chords in this way, if you want to develop that aspect of your playing, then it's time to leave Wonderwall behind. And after you cannot just think about the chords as being static grips. You really have to know what notes are in there, what are you playing, and what can you do with those notes. That's really what you want to develop. And you can do that by doing what I'm doing in this video. So just taking voicings and changing notes and just listen to what's happening. Another good way to do that is to work on harmonizing melodies and making your own chord melody arrangements. The main thing is that you want to be aware of what notes you're playing, you want to have options in terms of what you can do with them, and you don't want to mess up the music and then have to say I instinctively used the Vulcan death grip. When you're playing jazz chords, then the context of a 2-5-1 is pretty predictable and in a way that's what we're using here. We're taking advantage of the fact that it's really a chord progression that's easy for us to hear. We're very used to it. And then we can play some really vague voicings. That's essentially what this entire video is about. The first chord is really just coming out of this basic A minor seven voicing. And then instead of playing the seventh, I'm playing a ninth like this. Then the D7 is derived from this D7 voicing, also just really an F sharp diminished voicing, really basic, D7 without the root. And uh, then I'm playing the flat five instead of the five, and I'm also playing the flat 13 instead of the uh, seventh, so I get an incomplete voicing. The G voicing, the first one is actually just a G6-9, and that's just a straight ahead G6-9. It's an E sus 4 triad. And then from there, I move up to this more spicy version of a G where I'm really going for just having the major third and then getting the sharp 11 in there, but also having the fifth to have that minor second. But of course, you can also explore voicings like this on the top string set, and that actually makes a few things easier to play. The other day I was surfing around, checking out some YouTube videos, and I came across some from uh, Miko Hilton, who's a Swedish guitar player. He makes really great videos, in fact. But he was sort of bragging about how his audience was like really advanced and left really advanced comments. I think we should just kind of show him how advanced you guys are. Could you leave some comments with some really, really difficult jazz words in them? Then, um, then we're kind of setting the record straight, I think. But in all seriousness, Miko is well worth checking out. So definitely check out his channel if you get the chance. You'll probably find it useful. Uh, I think the only problem is that he's Swedish. With voicings like this, you don't have to stick to the middle string set. You can also move up to the top string set and then you get a slightly different sound and some things get a lot easier to play. Here I'm starting with the same A minor 11 that I did in the first example. So this is of course really just 
this one, but on another string set. But what I do next is that I play this melody note. And that would be a little bit tricky if I'm up here. And then from there I move to this D7 flat 9, where I'm really not using any any uh, third, so there's no F sharp in this voicing. And that's because I think I have the seventh and then I want to have this minor second interval. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on. Again, this would be a little bit more difficult to play up here, but still it is possible. Then I'm changing the melody and then resolving down to this, which in the context is going to sound like a G major seven sharp 11. Uh, and actually it's the same voicing as the that's the D7, it's just moved down a half step. And then this I'm using as a sort of suspension where I'm resolving it down to this G69. And the way that works is that all the voices are just moving stepwise up or down. So I have the B is going down to A, D up to E. So we have, and then you have the, uh, sorry, the C sharp going down to the B. So we get. As you can see in this video, this is really about making chords more flexible so that you can do more things with them and sound fresh and improvise with them. And if you want to explore that more, then check out this video where I'm going over a way to really tie together a lot of different types of voicings and also how you can start making music with it and improvise with it so that you become more free and have more options with improvising with chords.